Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. We have CC Peniston. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Good morning. I feel like there should have been some feeling? theme music playing or something. Oh, how you have feeling? Stacey Peniston here. Yeah, I know. Finally, right? <laughs> you know, so it, how it, you quarantining? I'm sorry to say, how are you quarantining? Where are you at? How's everything going in this in this pandemic? Man, I'm in Arizona. Um, everything is. You know what? It's been a lot of different things going on. I've had um, some people that were dealing with COVID. A couple of people in the hospital. Just um, just trying to be even more creative. You know, staying to myself, do a little spiritual growth, you know, just working on me, enjoying mm-hmm. the band it. when I can. Because, you know, when you're traveling for years, y'all already know being in the music business, it's like, dang, uh, I finally get a chance to, like, be home for a minute, kind of, mm-hmm. you know, have a woosa for a second. It, I, not the woosa I asked for, <laughs> but right. at least I get, a, you know, I get a second to, like, you know. Yeah. You know, Cece, I wanted to ask you, I know in the 90s you had uh, five number one hits on the, on the Billboard mm-hmm. dance charts. Can a person sustain financially forever with, with, with that? Why not? I've still been getting my royalties for 30 years off of Fine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ever since finally came out in the 90s, I still get my royalties from it. Now, is it the royalties I should be getting? <laughs> no. <laughs> but however, uh, yeah, you can get paid off of it. That's why, you know what? That's why people are so funny about doing publishing and um, I'm doing their paperwork and everything because people really don't know how artists can really be taken care of by their body of work. When you put right, you and you your can... first contract, did you get got? Was, was it a horrible contract or, or did you know early on? You know what? Um, actually, I didn't have a horrible contract. What happened was finally started gaining some success and then things started changing around after people kind of started seeing where finally went. And actually what people don't know is I was recouped in 1997 with Final. Mm. Um, so Finally has been like good to me. And the other good thing that happened with Finally is um, when Finally came out, and it's hard to see this, but when Finally came out, it was on the charts for 33 out of 52 weeks, which you don't see now because artists are putting out music like every three months. Like our world is so euphoric. They want to hear music like all the time. So I think that's the difference now, like as then, you will work a record for like eight months. Now it's just like, you know, every three months people are put, sorry, people are putting stuff down. Right. Every, and you've been every very, month. very vocal about making sure you do have your business in order because you had some accounting issues and business manager issues and all of those things to deal with early on. Yeah, definitely. You know what it is, Angela, when, it, when stuff happens at your own hand, it's different. When someone spends your money for you and get you in a tax problem, <laughs> you want to get your gun. <laughs> <laughs> Let me. You know what I'm saying? You know the thing about it is when you first get in the music business, it's kind of like, hey, here's the accountant, here's the lawyer. Mm-hmm. You don't know what you're doing. You just know that you want to sing, right? Right. And then what happens after that is, then everything starts happening from there. The album was like, hey. We want you to finish the album within three months of you traveling. And I was like, oh, okay. Y'all want me to finish the album? Okay. Um, so in between gigs, I was going in the studio and stuff, right? And, um, and then finally had a different type of success because who would have known that, like, I'm still doing what I'm doing? In fact, this is funny, but when I first did it the first year, I was only home for like three, three weeks out of the year. And I wouldn't go get a house because I was like, yo, I got to wait a minute because I don't know how long this is going to last, you know? Mm-hmm. When, when did you realize your accountant was messing up your money? Because I think I read somewhere where, where they got you for like a million? Yeah, uh, he got me for a mil, at least a mil or, okay. or more, and then tried to tell me I owed him money, which was funny. Oh, wow. I was like, oh, you real bold right now. I hope you sleep good at night. And then I realized I had a problem with him because my tax situation, I realized he had got me in a tax situation. I'm like, wait a minute, now I got to look into some other things. And you know, it was kind of, a real traumatic experience for me, actually. Because, as you know, you work all these years and you're like, dang, I've built a, a nest egg for myself. And then you look back and see, hey, you know, someone has made a choice for me that I didn't make. Right. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, you've been uh, doing a tremendous job at still staying out there all these years and touring and traveling. And I want to ask you about this uh, animated series I saw you doing. Oh, okay. That's what's up. Okay. 
So what's the, tell me about the petties and what, what's that all about and what's the plans for that? So actually, you know what? I started the petties because I always wanted to do animation. I'm always doing voices and stuff all the time, right? And so when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is the perfect opportunity for me to take the time to do some of the things I've always been wanting to do. And so I did the petties because I feel like the petties can talk shit when I don't feel like doing that. Because <laughs> sometimes I, I want to say something, I'll be like, I'm just going to let the petty say it. And then sometimes people come to me and they'll say, hey, can you talk about this? I can't talk about it, but the petties can. <laughs> you know, so it's a fun outlet for me to say the things I want to say. Like what, are the, what would the petties be talking or? about? Oh, well, the last episode that we had was um, he was laying in the bed and she was like, uh, so I, so her, one of her voices, it, it was petty AF, uh, petty as fuck, right? And so she was like, oh, okay. So you going to distract me and then go to bed? So she got petty and went to the club, right? And so she was putting up all these memes and uh, she, it was like, uh, there was a song in the background, I'm having feelings for my ex, yeah. Right, and, and he's looking on there like, yo, what's up with the notification? So go look at the episode and check it out. Cece, what, you know? what made you get into uh, dance in the 90s? Why, 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 why dance instead of like regular R&B? Uh... You know what, I feel like kind of like it just happened that way. It's funny because I was always the person that came to like the different contests, right? And I was the one slowing the party down when I, when I did uh, like talent shows and karaoke contests and stuff before I got in the music business, right? And so when I got there, I had written, finally, it just kind of happened that way. Mm -hmm. um, Felipe, I had this, this melody in my head. And then I had uh, the, you know, the lyrics written down and I was like, hey, this is what I hear. And so he did the beat for it, him and RK. And, you know, what happened is what you hear now. Was dance yeah, big in, in Ohio when you was growing up? Was dance a big thing? Because that was like a, a, a New York uptown club type of thing. Was it big where you were from? You know what the thing about it is? So I, I, I grew up in um, Arizona more than Dayton. My father was in the military. And so him being in the military, I moved here when I was about like nine. And uh, in Arizona, there was no house scene. There was none of that. And so I found out later on that like New York, Chicago, all of them were, you know, hot spots that people love to go to and they enjoy it. And so, um, you know, it was something, like I said, it was a learning lesson. I had no idea about the house scene until I got into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Are you still in the yeah. house scene or you, not, you don't listen to house music no more? What? Hell yeah, I do. <laughs> look, I'll start, look, I definitely listen to house. Definitely. I'm a part of the culture. And, you know, so for me, it's like I'll never stop listening to it. But I do definitely listen to other types of music. You're not just How a many part guys of the culture, though. You're a queen of the culture. Thank Absolutely. You. A queen of dance music. How many guys try to holler at you that fit the description and finally? Description and finally. <laughs> you know what's funny? Okay. Thank you, Charlamagne, for the compliment. Um... You know what, when I when finally first came out, I actually got married right away. Um, so you found them, okay, okay. I found them, girl, I wrote about them, and then I found them like right after I wrote about them. So I had gotten right away, and it was like, dang, your career just start, you know, why you get married right away? And I was like, oh, he writes me poetry. I wanna, you know, I wanna marry him, I love him. And then, you know, that lasted for about a year, and I think it was, you know, me being on the road a lot and then, you know, uh, not being at home, you brand new marriage and everything. And it was like, this is not what I signed up for type of thing. So then you know, keep on walking, then keep on walking came out. Yeah, girl. I was like, okay. So it was like, <laughs> finally, we got a love thing, but keep on walking because we had a crazy love. <laughs> did, did, were coming out with how my life was going, actually, which was crazy. Now, you, I, I, I think I read somewhere, too, that your royalties had gotten messed up. Um, let's see, messed up. Not really messed up. Um, so there's a lot of things I feel like the people don't know about the music business. Like you Break can start. So, I'm, I'm, so the thing about it is when you start out with an original body of work, you start out with an original ISRC code. And along the way, there was like different things that happen. I can't speak on everything, but I will tell you there's different misspellings, there's different bodies of work. For instance, let me give you an example. The other day I was um, getting ready to post some. I go in the story and it says, it has me and Vesta Williams on the picture. You can go look this up, right? On the side of it, it says CC Peniston and the four tops. So when things like that happen, that means, 
Right. I'm like, when I do a record with the four tops, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was like, when you see stuff like that, that means you're not getting paid properly as the artist. When they misspell your name, you're not getting paid properly. So I've seen a lot of different things, just like um, with Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. It was called Finale and Overture instead of Finally. So that's a whole nother body of work now where someone has done something different. So it's like little, little ways that people slip stuff in, don't get your permission, don't give you the right writer's credit or, be, or the greedy. Like I find that a lot of people are just greedy. Right. You know, for real. Who keeps, who keeps, track, who keeps track of that money though? Because I know people, I don't know if that's like a publishing thing. Is it a, how do you figure that out and make sure you get your money? The thing about it is I have lawyers. I have people that look over my paperwork. But at the end of the day, people can kind of do what they want to do. They can slant things a certain way to make it look a certain way. Or like, hey, this is what this was for. Or this is the account that that's going into. And mm -hmm. lots of times I feel like I've been misunderstood because people think I'm screaming or being unreasonable. And I'm like, no, I'm not being unreasonable and I'm not screaming. I'm letting you know the real but I try to also understand, you know what, it's still a business. So you still got to come like a business person whenever you're doing stuff. Right. No was Even if it's an artist you like, because I, I, I saw you talking about Lizzo and saying that you like Lizzo and love Lizzo as an artist, but then there was that issue with uh, her song and with your song and the interpolation and all of that. So it wasn't an attack on her. It was just as an artist, you want to make sure you get what you're supposed to get. Well, whatever you read, Angela, is what it is. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to say is, I love Lizzo's music. It sounds familiar. So I will say that. But the thing about it is, I feel like right is right, wrong is wrong, whatever it seems to be. Um, if someone takes, okay, let me ask you this. If I'm the only one that has done a certain signature since I started, and somebody else does it, if that was you, that's like you doing a body work, doing some poetry or something. Someone starts reciting and then people think it's you. How would that feeling be? Mm -hmm. And, and then people like think you're sure, screaming. Absolutely. And originally, MD, so I'm going to say this. I was just putting out a post like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person, I pay homage to people who I need to pay homage to on different things, right? So it was just like, hey, sis, you know, blah, 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 blah. It was like more of just like a statement. I had no idea that it was really gonna go as far as it did, or like it was gonna blow up like that. And I was like, wait a minute. So, I mean, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, y'all listen to music all the time. Y'all listen okay. to, you know, different genres of music. I'm sure you can probably, you probably can't admit it here, but you might've heard some similarities or, or not. Yeah, yeah, or well, not of course. I, I, just, I just assume that they got it cleared whenever I hear something. Yeah, like we don't that. know. Do you have a team though? Like I know Sugar Hill Gang, they have a team of people that that's their job and all day they listen to see if people sample their type of records. Cause I know you had a, I think a problem with Chris Brown and Joyner Lucas of possibly sampling your stuff. Do you have a team that, that goes out and listens for that? I have an absolute team, but once mm -hmm. again, people can slant things to be whatever. And I actually have writers uh, credit on the Joyner Lucas and Chris Brown track. Mm -hmm. um, so certain things um, get cleared. Um, professionally the way that they should be and other things is just like hey if we kind of like scoot over this way maybe nobody will say anything and I'm not the first artist and I won't be the last that this has happened to I mean I feel like the system has kind of been set up to you know be in favor of you know whoever signed you if you, if you know you're a business product at the end of the day to whoever signs you and so you have to you know understand that that's what it is Right. But, you know, I just, I don't feel like I should have to be quiet if something isn't right. Hell no. Although, that may you, not be somebody else's idea of what I should do. Did, did you ever take legal action against Chris Brown and Joyner Lucas? Like, how did your name end up being in the, the writing credit? Well, because the, they actually used, finally, in the, in the hook, right? Mm -hmm. And they used the melody line in the hook, and they called the song, finally. So I'm actually okay. on the writer's credit. If you go to genius.com, um, Charlamagne, you can see where the writer's credit and everything is on there. My name is on there. Yeah, I, I, I saw what you said that they didn't yeah. take the, I saw what you said, you didn't take the, they didn't take the proper steps. I didn't know uh -huh. what that meant though. 
I saw what you said, join in. Chris said they didn't take the proper steps to use the record, but I didn't know what that meant. No, I wasn't sure until oh, I gotcha, saw gotcha, what gotcha. I saw. I wasn't okay. sure. Now, do you I wasn't sure. Uh, and you know, because when someone had asked me about it at the time, sometimes, you know what it is, the, the company has put out uh, bodies of work. They don't give me an announcement about what they're doing. And someone would be like, yo, I heard your song, or blah, 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 or I saw it on this show or whatever. And, you know, <laughs> again, I'm supposed to be notified of those things. And if you're not notifying me, and you know you're supposed to, see, the system is not always set up to be in the artist's favor. It's just not. But Sometimes, if you own the record, shouldn't you have to sign off if you own the record? Shouldn't they have to sign uh, off every time everybody sampled? It, it should be you getting it, they have to clear it through you? That's what I think. That's what I think, Envy. Mm -hmm. um, that's what my paperwork says, but... Uh, I got it. <laughs> now, you I mean, suing, got suing, it. suing everybody's asshole because if you don't get the proper clearance, like I know certain artists, whether it's Prince or it's either Michael Jackson or certain accounts, if they don't get the proper clearance through them, if they don't get the okay, it's not going to get clear. Because I remember even when I did my album, like it was certain samples that I, we couldn't get the clearance. We asked the estate and the estate was like, no, it's too much cursing in it or it's secular music or certain things. And we couldn't get the clearance. Now we tried to play it over and do an interpolation. Mm -hmm. but if we did it, we had to clear it or we would get sued. You know what? I wish I knew what the deal was and I wish I could give you an answer on why they do that. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like I've had integrity in the things that I do or how I push stuff. Because why wouldn't you want the artist to actually push the body of work that you do? And especially when you know I'm recouped. Mm -hmm. You know I'm recouped. I paid my dues. Finally has been done. Like seriously, like it's been on at least 5,000 compilations. Wow. Different artists have done stuff. If you go to Who Sample Who, you can at least find a hundred things of artists who have sampled my music from Travis Scott to um, to Joyner Lucas to um, uh, what Belton Wetzel to Parks did my song over. Adele did it in concert. Lady Gaga did it in her tour. And so did uh, Adele. So it's like I've been blessed to have a body of work that people still love. Because you know what? Everybody doesn't get that. So, mm -hmm. you know. But it is one of the things, like, there's a lot of questions for me as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Like what? Well, I what see are the questions? The why. Like, like why y'all still, like, why can't we all eat? Mm -hmm. Why can't we all eat? Like, I don't understand mm -hmm. when people, like, hey, I like to, I've learned. I will tell you what this did for me, though. I felt, you know, bullied by the whole situation, to be honest with you. Because I can see what's wrong, but I can't fix it. Mm -hmm. I can see when there's a misspelling or I can see when something came out. So what it did is it called me to be a, be a better businesswoman. And I'm really, you know, I'll see something and I'll be like, hey, I'm on top of it. So I learned my lesson. I mean, I think that's really all you can do. Yeah, but you know, and, and sometimes uh, uh, in an artist's defense, when they do a record, it goes to a team to clear. So they automatically say, okay, we got the clearance. They keep it moving. Like, I, like I had to, to clear many of records and I never reached out to the artist. It was like they have a label that handles that in the department. And when they say it's clear, we just think it's clear and we go. You know, we don't think about, you know, should I contact the artist? Should I make it so okay? You know, I don't, I don't think that's in a lot of artists' mind, a lot of artists' mind. It's not that I don't see or it hasn't been addressed, but why do I have to keep addressing it? You know what the protocol is, what you're supposed to do. You don't have a lawyer. You know, I've had a few. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why do I have to keep going back and forth with you when you already know what the protocol is? Mm -hmm. At that point, I just feel like, are you just trying to break me? Are you just trying to make me like, hey, we're not going to give her nothing because we want to break her from saying something or we want to erase her because you keep letting so many bodies of work go. It's like, are you trying to erase the artist? Like, what are you really doing? So it's just one of those things where... You know, I don't really know what the outcome, in, outcome is, but this is one of the reasons that I won't leave the business because I feel like sometimes I've wanted to because of this kind of stuff. Because I'm like, yo, I just came in to sing. I didn't ask for all this right here. But what it has done for me is it had made me say, no one can tell my story but me. Mm -hmm. And I have, to, I have to finish telling the story first before anything different happens right i was going to ask you I that do. you know are you going to do a book or a movie because i i think i even read something that you're doing of producing a film for another diva oh thank you well actually i am 
Um, I'm working along with Lady Luck and Steve Rage. We're working on a reality show. Um, I can't tell you the name yet, but we're definitely uh, working on that behind the scenes. And then I'm working on a biopic as well um, of, about my life because I really do think people need to understand the why. Because I feel like as an artist, when you're relatable to people, I feel like they, like I had my hard times. I've had my struggles. And people really need to know that. They're like, well, you're always in lashes and lipstick. I said, don't let the smooth taste fool you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't, let, don't let it fool you. I've been through my share of stuff, but I feel like that's the part that kept me so real right. and kept me me right. outside of how, the music industry. How far along are you in the biopic? Uh, we started working on like different scenarios of things that happen, um, different scenes, but the, the script isn't fully written yet. But we definitely started on it. I've had people that are around me and close to me that have seen things that have different memories. I say, hey, write those things down, send them to me so that people know, hey, I was the eyes behind everything that happened. And they can see that. Mm -hmm. How revealing now are you, you going to get? How much are you going to open up? You going to put it all on the table? Um, I think there's always a part that people hold back for themselves because I feel like there has to be a little part of your life, but I don't have a problem being transfer transparent because I feel like if I can help somebody else with my experience and let them know, like, cause sometimes, okay, so Charlamagne, they always say, you always doing too much. And I'm like, but let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let mm -hmm. me tell you why. It's not like I'm just being unreasonable. Um, I just don't think you understand the story behind everything. Are you going to talk about your marriage and everything, your first marriage? Yeah, definitely. The marriages, all that stuff. Is, are you still cool with everybody? Y you know, I talked, to my, I talked to my second husband. He was cool. He was a good man. I loved him. You know what I'm saying? We're still friends. He's remarried, doing his thing now. My first husband, I haven't seen him. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen him. You know, he yeah. pissed me off a couple of times, Angela. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what, Cece, when you said what happened, I felt like you were making it more seem like it was on you because you were traveling all the time and it was hard for him. Um, it was hard for him, but it was hard for me too because he pissed me off a couple of times, not understanding what I had to do, calling me. I got promoters on the phone and he's like, hey, I need to talk to you. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm in front of a promoter right now. I can't talk, right? And he's like, yo, I need to talk right now. I'm like, um, hey, I'm going to hit you back. Wow. And just not understand it, but I, I don't know if that's definitely like just a flaw of not really understanding that lots of times we're just busy, not really doing anything. You just can't talk right at that moment because you have ears around you or people around you that you don't really don't want to hear your private conversations. And you were young. How old were you when, that, when you first got married? Oh man, I was 21. I was young, yeah. dumb, and you know the rest, girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I get the... I get the feeling, CC, that you feel like you don't get your just due. And that's the reason you go so hard about potentially being a race when people use your stuff and, and, and don't give you credit. It's not about the credit. It's not about the like, Charlemagne. At the end of the day, it's about what's right. And I feel like there's just protocol. And I just feel like I haven't been done the right way. Um, mm -hmm. If people like my posts, I appreciate it. Um, I do it for me. Um, at the same time, I just feel like, hey, um, I also have to stay in the game and make sure people know that, hey, yeah, I am still here because of those type of things. When I tell you, it's always, um, I'm getting a new, like, um, I'm, I'm hearing something new, but finally I'm like, like, I just really wonder, like, what are y'all doing? Like, for real. True. Mm -hmm. so I'm just, now, it's like, okay, it's, like, it's your baby. I'm like, I got... That one song, I have five top tens, yes, like how you said, but finally it's my baby. Like, if you had it done over and over and over again, it's not that it's not a compliment, but it's also like, hey, if it's being done over, then maybe there's some relevance to what I've actually added. So that's, what, that's where the issue is. It's like people try to dumb down your body of work, but yet it's still being put out there every single year. So that's my question. Like, they try to say, hey, you, you this, this, and that, but it's still being used. True. You, you were also the first uh, foreign female entertainer to perform in uh, post-apartheid South Africa, right? Mm -hmm. Did I read that correctly? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, 
you know what? And I enjoyed that. That was like a real spiritual experience for me. Um, and it's funny because they had asked me to come over before apartheid. And I was like, no, I really don't want to come over for apartheid. And I ended up hitting the stage and I was like, damn, you know, I'm in the motherland. And I was like happy. You know what I'm saying? I was excited. And, you know, so by the way, y'all can ask me, you know, whatever else y'all want to ask me. Y'all don't have to be in the safe zone with me, just so y'all know. <laughs> And you don't have no, to go not, by Wikipedia, because no, Wikipedia, because Wikipedia, I feel like they're so opinionated. I've never seen two pages with opinionated, <laughs> okay, opinionated attitude in the Wikipedia. You know how they usually just give the info? Right. Mm -hmm. What does like, Wikipedia say? Yo, yeah, Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Your, let me go look at your Wikipedia. Yeah, what is Wikipedia saying about you? Let's go on Wikipedia. Let's see what's on oh, there. Oh, she, Cece done did so much. She performed at private engagements for Aretha Franklin's private birthday party. She performed for Pope John Paul II at the Vatican. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> I knew about South Africa. Let me see. Let me find the dirt. Let me see. Let me see. We got to go to the dirt. Oh, 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 look. Here we go. Look. Oh, they, I say. Oh, they got controversy. Oh, there goes. Let me see. So with, with no, I'm just saying. You know what? So I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say this. Sometimes when people see me, they don't really ask me the questions that they really wanna ask me sometimes. They stay in the safe zone with me and I know it's a form of respect oh. and I appreciate it, but I want people to ask me the questions that they wanna ask me. Okay, so what happened with you and Monica? You and Monica had a beef, I see that and misunderstand. You know, we usually <laughs> see, don't go to Wikipedia. See? Okay, let's talk. Cause Wikipedia so, is usually a lot, they lie sometimes. Like, but, but what happened with you and Monica? So it really wasn't a beef. So this is what happened, right? I feel like it was a miscommunication more than anything. Me and Monica, this was before Monica had gotten in the business. I was at a, um, a performance and she had come up to me and I had to end up leaving. You know how your handlers be like, hey, we got to go. Mm -hmm. She thought I was shading her, but I really wasn't shading her, right? But that's how she felt. So later on, um, I, and I loved all her music. This is, right. I, I love all her music, right? So I ended up, um, I ended up uh, hearing that she had a beef with me and I was like, what? Yo, I didn't even know she had a beef with me. Like, in my mind, I don't remember the situation going down that way. But since she felt that way, I said, let me address it. So I addressed it. I put a letter out. I sent something to her, and it ended up on the Jasmine brand. And so I was like, oh, okay. I was like, and, and, she, and she wrote me back. She wrote me back, and we were cool after that. That's okay. good. You know what I'm saying? It was up. cool. So, yeah, definitely. It was a misunderstanding. Yeah, more of a miscommunication. Like she felt like I had was being funny style, and I was like, "Nah, sis, I wouldn't be in funny style to you." I mean, I lo I love your body work, your music, and stuff. So, did you did yeah, you have a reputation she, for being rude to people? Um, I have a reputation for being uh, direct. Do you? I'm think just so? wondering. No, you I, think I, I was listen. I was excited. I said, "CC Penison, you know." So, <laughs> but I know my, people always tell me this. They'd be like, "Well, Angela, people treat you differently than they treat other people." So. That's why Do I you think I'm that. rude? I don't think so. I feel like I'm direct. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I just like, I feel like sometimes people are abrupt with me and then I have to soldier up and be like, okay, is that what we doing? Like what I've noticed during pandemic and, and it be pissing me off sometimes, people be like, yo, I need this. And you'd be like, oh, <laughs> oh how you doing today? Yeah, how's good? everything? How's the family? Like, is your family good? You all right? Mm -hmm. Like they just keep coming at you like any type of way. And so, you know, I don't feel, I feel like people are insensitive during this time when we have a lot of sensitivity going on in the whole wide world. You know what I mean? Right. No, you're right. Why does oh, that, plastic that, that, surgery it, come up when, when, when it says controversies? Have you had a lot of plastic surgery? Is that something that that's, that's big or well, I don't understand why, um, why that's I, coming up? I had lipo done and I, I put it out there that I had lipo done, but I also got on a, um, uh, a weight loss plan and started working out in the gym and all that stuff. But I ain't, I ain't funny style about sharing it. I right, because you done. can't do lipo and not work out after. That won't work Man, out what? It might start going to other places. Right. You took it out in the stomach and now you got back fat and you'd be like, dang, what happened? <laughs> so... <laughs> I ended up doing the um I ended up doing the lipo, right? And after I did mm -hmm. the lipo, then I lost about 40 pounds because I ended up getting into a fitness competition. I did a, a bodybuilding competition in 2014 because I said, I'm gonna put it out there. I had never done it before. So six months before Angela, I put it out there, Charlemagne, right? And then I was like, Oh, I'm gonna do a bodybuilding competition, had never done it. And ended up doing it, stepping on stage. I was about a size two. 
The pictures are online. Wow, size two. Yeah, yeah girl. Uh, 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 I've been a size inside two inside since high school. <laughs> girl, I know <laughs> I have been a minute. I was like, dang, I'm gonna have a bobblehead in a minute. Look, my head like <laughs> they were like, don't look my <laughs> Your head's starting to look big. <laughs> Did the industry drive you to that? No. That's okay. something that I wanted to do. But you know what? I will tell you this, that the label, I was told when I first got into the business, my weight was good. I was probably about like a size six. I can't say that I didn't fluctuate during like my career. I was, you know, at, at certain times I was a coat. I was keeping, I was keeping you warm because I had gained a little weight. So, you know, I was a coat. <laughs> but then other times I was in shape. So it just depends on the time that you got me and I got tired of the yo-yo. And looking at pictures would be like, dang, I see your stomach. I don't see anything else but your stomach, I told myself. So I, I was like, it's got its whole, <laughs> its own thing. So I decided to get in shape and, you know, get on a lifestyle type thing, workout. Now, you've now, also been really open about, about miscarriages, too. And you've mm -hmm. been open about uh, suffering from miscarriages. It was, how many, how many did you have? Five. Five. Mm -hmm. That had to be a really difficult time for you as oh, well. Definitely. I was definitely a traumatic experience, but it was with the same man, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but the thing about it was, it's like I had to cover those things. And sometimes when I looked heavier, it's like my boobs was full because I was just pregnant and people didn't know mm -hmm. that, or I was heavier. Or my mindset wasn't right and my spirit was off because I just felt, you know, some type of way. But you know, artists, our job is to make your, um, our job is to make your bad day a good day. So I learned how to cover because that's what people want to see. They don't want to see you up there complaining or talking about how you feel. You know what I mean? Yeah, but then that's part of the healing process too, to be able to express how you really feel instead of having to cover that as well. Because people always, can relate to it. I always say you only have to tell the truth one time mm -hmm. and then you are able to heal from that point. Um, other people may have their judgments about it. And the reason I didn't really talk about it sooner is because I felt like people would not really understand how I felt about it. I had to get over it first so that if somebody said something off or felt some type of way, I could say, hey, that was then and this is right. now, you know, so. How, how does a person heal from that though? Because not only are you reliving that trauma from, from one miscarriage, you keep getting traumatized because they keep happening. Like, how do you heal from that? You know what? I would always say this. There's always a little part of me that wonders and wishes and says, what if I had children, how my life would be different? Um, however, you get to a place and say that, you know what? God just had another thing for me to do. He had another mission for me. And so I, I, I had to get to that place first so I could just get to the healing part. Right. Um, but it wasn't easy. I mean, I still have moments where I get emotional about it, where I'm like looking at something like, dang, I wonder how that would have, you know, turned out, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. And you, and you did say you suffered from depression also, right? Oh, and yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. you think those things were related? Was it? Um, I think it was an accumulation of things at the time. Um, that's when I had found out the stuff about the accountant and it was the babies and so your money funny and now I got to be an entertainer and my, my, fun, my money's funny and I, I'd have been pregnant now I got to go perform and, and then I'm, I'm not getting the same pay grade that I was getting before and I was agitated and, and my feelings were hurt and then your marriage is weird because you become a stranger to that person because now you're out on the road and so y'all don't really get to communicate the way that you really need to communicate so um all those things just made it weird for me. What helped you? Um, just saying that I try to wake up. One of my things I do is I write poetry um, late at night and I keep it to myself. The other things is like I journal and I just say, hey, you wake up tomorrow differently. And I've kind of used that like, hey, you get a day to go the hell off or feel some type of way. And I, I isolate. So people always tell me, dang, you're so animated all the time, right? And I'm like, I know. I say, but I have my quiet moments too. So sometimes mm -hmm. I just take time to myself. Now, now you had some experiences with colorism too, right? So you see people didn't think you were pro-black because you were light-skinned? I've never heard that, but that's new to <laughs> oh. me. But uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Yo, so allegedly. That damn Wikipedia. <laughs> <Okay>. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> they must have just put that in there because they knew I was going to be on here today. See, this is what I'll be talking about with Wikipedia. They be putting you dated Mickey Mouse. Damn. Anyway. You know you can change your Wikipedia. <laughs> I know, but then they change it back because I they changed change it. Right it back. And they're so petty. I need to put that in my petty cartoon. Wikipedia keep changing it. So I changed it already and they changed it back. So anyway, I just gave up. Um, so um, I feel like this. My mother... My mother was brown skin. My dad was light skin. I don't personally have a problem with colorism. Other people may have had a problem with me, but if they had a problem with me, that's their problem because I don't have a problem with it. And right. just so you know, um, like I was always authentically me. Um, sometimes I'd be like, no, I don't want to do this. I was opinionated and I would get in trouble for that. I'm like, no, I don't want my hair like that. I don't want this. I don't want that. So I would get in trouble sometimes. Mm. <laughs> guilty. <laughs> Listen, did you have any little R? Did you ever have any R and B romances or any dance romances back in the day with some celebrities that we never heard about behind the scenes when we didn't have social media? You know what? I'm not here to snitch on the Breakfast Club. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, now. Say you don't have to say. Who. Hey, hey, we don't do that. We don't snitch, do we? You don't have to say who, but no entanglements. Um, you know what I always say when people talk too much about who they've been with or do whatever, I call it bitch assness, to be honest with you. I was with mm -hmm. so-and-so, and I'm like, oh, really? Okay. All right. Well, that's your business. No entanglements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when... But you know, I, later I on, when you look back and at I'm it, it was like we were excited to hear about, say, Bobby Brown and Janet Jackson. We were like, wow, we didn't know that happened. You know what? Maybe you'll hear about some things in the biopic. We'll see what happens. Okay. Okay. You know, right. I, look, if I give you we, everything we, right now, then you won't watch. You won't be interested. That's very true. I, I mentioned this earlier, but I don't, did you ever say who the, is it true that you're doing a, a producing a film for another major diva that you um, respect? Man, I can't you talk about it, but I'll put it like this. Sometimes I drop little hints on my Instagram. So if people go through my Instagram, they can see little things I'm doing on there and kind of kind of check out the program. So, okay. okay. You need to make a cartoon called CC's Clues. Huh? Okay, like CC's Blues Clues. Clues. <laughs> like, <it's> <laughs> I know, right? Did y'all, hey, I did one for y'all just when I was getting ready to be on the show. I had done a couple of characters. If y'all go look back this morning, yes, I don't know yeah. if y'all mm -hmm. saw it, but I, um, the, the me and Overtime Sims, who have been working on the uh, cartoon together, um, it's funny, and I met him because I had done a keep on walking challenge, right? I did the keep on walking challenge. I was like, yo, I love it. Him and, and uh, Papa Petey, big Papa Petey, giving much love to y'all. And, um, and I love what he did. I said, oh, he put a green screen. He had all kinds of stuff, right? And so I said, oh, hey, I love what you do. And he said, hey, I do animation and stuff like that, right? And I was like, oh, I love that. So we had this, um, this cartoon called The Clouds. And I said, well, I have this one I want to do called The Petties. And so we started working on it. So I do the voices of the girls' voices. All the girls' voices are me. And he does the guys' voices. But I could do a guy's voice, though. Like, I could do <laughs> Tyrone in the drive through Let me hear. Hey, Era, can I get your name for the grand girl? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I have to be on point just in case he gets sick or something. He can't do the right. dude. Hey, baby girl. <laughs> One woman show here. Well, Cece, we appreciate you checking in, Cece. Thank you so much. I thought y'all was really going this morning. Nah, oh, that's right. never the that's uh, never the goal. Was Look, I thought y'all was going to get me this morning, and we, 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 nah, we, we can only we respect can, you so oh, much. Oh, y'all love me? Look. Yeah. Yeah. But even, but, but, you know, but I, even you if know it's, I'd be excited. It's CC Peniston we got here, okay? Even if it's respect and love, though, we can only get, get you on what's out there. It's not like we're making right. stuff up. Yeah. Of course, because you always want to know. Huh? No, you good. You clean out here. Yeah, you clean. You thank good. you, boo. Look, thank you. That's what's up. Oh, we, can have some, we can have some drinks Absolutely. on lip service, though, so. <laughs> oh, that's all. Oh, you want to get, okay, we can get, we can turn it up on lip service. I'm with it. Okay. Right. Well, Cece, thank you for joining us. It's Cece right, Peniston. It's the breakfast your house, of the morning. Your house, Cece, your house look like it smell good, by the way. Oh, look, got I, had the whole I had the old, whole incense popping in the back, the little candle, everything. Thank okay. you. That's my little thing I do every morning. Light my candles, all my stuff. Get my chi together, you know? Nice zen there moments. You go. It's zen all right, right, right. Cece. All right, thanks for having me on, y'all. All right, now. All right. Thank you.